this out. I've temporarily removed the x-axis rails from this 3D printer. And look, if I move this XY joiner, the other XY joiner moves as well. Spooky action at a distance. I have two Hypercube printers. This one on the left is the original printer that I've built during the build lock series. And this printer over here is the second printer I built using the exact bill of materials from the uh, Thingiverse Hypercube page. Uh, just for testing purposes, while I'm waiting for my other set of carbon tubes to arrive, I've just removed the carbon tubes from my original printer and moved them into this printer because I'm trying to figure out why this second printer that I've built has a, a slight rattle to it or, a, or a, like a grinding noise at, at certain speeds whenever the uh, X gantry is moving along the Y axis. Whenever there's, there's, the X axis is moving, there's, there's no noise, it's perfectly silent, but whenever the, the bearings are sliding across the rails, every now and then you hear a rattling sound and that's not something that I get from my original Hypercube 3D printer. So I'm just eliminating one item at a time to see what's causing the problem but I might be wasting my time because there might be a quicker and potentially cheaper way to get rid of any rattling from your 3D printer. The source of any rattling noise coming from my 3D printer is between the Y-axis rails, the steel rails, and also the LM8 LUU bearings on the XY joiners. There's a very slight bit of slop between these two components and at some resonance frequency they just simply oscillate and you hear that rattling sound during slow print moves. So I've found under 50 millimeters per second the rattling will occur. Anything over about 50 to 60 millimeters a second it's too fast. You won't get any rattling which is actually quite good for this 3D printer because it can attain those you know, 60 millimeters a second plus high speeds without too much of a drama. So that's one way to obviously get by without uh, hearing any rattling noise from your bearings. But when printing slower, and sometimes of course we do need to print slower to maintain uh, finished print quality, uh, there's a few things that we can try to eliminate this rattling noise. As I found out during the build log series, my intention was to reuse the 8mm steel rails from my old Replicio Prusa frame, but I found out that they weren't 8mm, they were 7.94mm. So just to ensure the rails that you use are 8mm in diameter, otherwise that will exacerbate any uh, rattling sound that you hear from your uh, linear bearings. Firstly, you're going to need to isolate the 3D printer from the table that you're resting it on. Now at the moment on this printer I'm using these furniture feet. They're made of quite dense rubber. I found that the denser the material the 3D printer is sitting on, the, the less uh, effect it has on dampening any vibrations that the 3D printer has. So because these feet are quite dense, it's only doing a marginal job in dampening out any res resonance or oscillations. Whereas on my other printer I'm using this closed cell foam rubber. So I can kind of compre compress this down to half its size. So it's more spongy than this dense rubber. And I've found even if I sit this printer on this material, it's a darn sight quieter again. So uh, I'm going to have to look at printing feet for this printer rather than using these store-bought uh, rubber bumpers. So that's the first thing definitely that needs to be done to quieten down your printer. And of course, the stepper motors are the originating location of any vibrations of your 3D printer, as these are the uh, motors that move all the axes around. It's only the X and Y axis that we need to worry about here. The Z and the extruder are fairly quiet throughout the entire print. Uh, one item that you can attach to your stepper motor before attaching to the uh, left or right motor mount is using one of these. This is an AstroSyn dampener. It sits in between the step motor and the mount for the motor. It's uh, two metal plates sandwiched in between uh, like a rubber dampener. And you can see the anchor points are at 90 degrees to each other. So any rotational force that this motor 
uh, producers rather than that force just being um, presented to the mo uh, to the mount which is presented to the frame. It's presented first through this circular rubber ring which will kind of isolate and damp dampen any uh, vibrations that occur from this motor before uh, attaching itself to the motor mount. Now I found this does a great job in limiting the amount of vibrations to the frame. So when it comes to choosing feet with your 3D printer, the feet plus um, one of these guys on each of the XY motors does a great job in reducing vibration, but it doesn't stop the bearing. It doesn't stop the bearing in the XY joiners, at least from what I've found, from rattling because the vibrations are being transmitted through the belts. And of course, that's directly attached to the XY joiners, which is then clamped around the, the bearing, which is then rattling on the uh, Y rail. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't use it. Uh, the only uh, issue I have with using this, especially on the left hand XY motor, is the actual pulley is already, let me just move the camera, the actual pulley is already quite high. It's mounted already quite high above the shaft of the stepper motor. So you'll have to raise this again by five millimeters to uh, offset the extra five millimeter height that the AstroSyn dampeners add to the entire length of the uh, left motor assembly. It makes sense to have a look at how we're driving these stepper motors. And if we pan across to the ramps board, we can have a look at the step sticks that we're using to drive the stepper motors. The most common stepper driver chips that we use for our 3D printers are these ones here. These are the A4988 step sticks. We usually set them in 16 micro step modes. So for every full step that the stepper motor provides, these drivers can chop that down to 1 16th. That provides greater accuracy and also smoother motion for the 3D printer. However, there are other options on the market as opposed to these A4988s and one of the most popular to quieten down your 3D printer is this one here. This is the TMC2100. This can break down each full step of the stepper motor down to 256 micro steps, which is a lot more than 16 that these ones provide. Uh, you can set these in two modes. There's stealth chop and spread cycle. Both of them provide the 256 micro stepping. One of them is classified as a noiseless operation. That's the stealth chop. However, to give you that noiseless operation, it's reducing the amount of torque that's available to the motor by reducing the amount of current. Uh, therefore, you may experience missteps. So the other, well, the, the one that everyone recommends is the spread cycle, which still gives you, of course, the 256 micro steps, but with greater torque for your motors. Now, I've ran my printer in both modes, the noiseless and also the high performance. The noiseless is very quiet, however, at very fast print speeds, I have noticed a few missteps. And also, if you just grab onto the gantry while the uh, 3D printer is printing, it easily gives up and the motors give way. However, in the high performance mode, in the spread cycle mode, the, uh, the torque in the motors are much higher and I haven't witnessed the misstep. Plus, still being a 256 micro steps, it is a much smoother operation than these uh, 16 micro step A4988 step sticks. By default, the TMC2100 comes in stealth chop mode. To enable spread cycle, you need to solder configuration number one jumper, which is located underneath the step stick. Replacing these step sticks is quite simple. You simply pop out the original one that is in there. You remove this bottom jumper. So there's three jumpers here. You remove this bottom one, which is facing the connectors in the USB port. So I can just pull that out. Then we go to pop in the TMC2100, but in the other way around. So where this particular step stick has the potentiometer up the top here, we'll turn this one around so it's facing down. Pop that in. The last thing that we need to do is it drives the motors reverse. So we just need to either pop out our connector turn that around and plug that back in or if you can't re if you can't rotate your connector you can do that in Marlin to reverse the direction whenever you replace a step stick on your ramps board it's best to adjust the uh, current to the motor and to do that there's a poten potentiometer on the step stick uh, I'll just use my screwdriver here which is hooked up to the multimeter so we can see live while I rotate this pot what voltage we're reading 
So we want 0.6 volts, which will give us 600 milliamps to the stepper motor. It's pretty close. And replace the other one. Pop out that bottom jumper. Grab our new step stick. Make sure it's facing the correct direction. Pop that in. Connect our motor back up, but reverse from what it was. And adjust the current to match the other one that we installed. That'll do. I'll perform three noise tests. The first test will be with the good old A4988 step stick, set to 16 micro steps of course. I'll be printing quite slowly at 40 millimeters a second because I want to induce any rattling that may occur between the bearings and the rails. I'll be just printing a 100 by 100 millimeter test cube with a honeycomb infill. Toward the end of that first test, I'll bump up the speed from 40 millimeters to 100 millimeters a second, just so you can hear the difference between the slow and the fast. Then for the second test, I'll switch out the step sticks to the TMC 2100s. Uh, the first test will be on stealth chop, so printing exactly the same item, same speed, but in the noiseless operation. And finally, the last test will be in spread cycle mode. So without further ado, let's begin. I've also unplugged the hot end fan as that's quite noisy and I want you to be able to hear the printer motion rather than the fan itself. Plus I'm not actually going to be printing anything, this is going to be a virtual print. Okay, I'll bump the speed up to 100 millimeters per second. Skipping steps. <laughs> 